I'm Shelleys and welcome to another episode of Book Talk. Today we are discussing Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Harry Potter! So I read this for the very first time and I finished it just yesterday and this is going to be up really late because I'm pre-recording it but today is Saturday the 18th I think, I, yep it's the 18th and this was this has been my favourite book so far out of the whole series. Um, there are, I love them all, obviously, but this one has been my favourite so far. I just it's so huge and it took me forever to get through, but they always take me forever to get through. I don't know if that's just me, but they just take me a really long time to get through, and I don't know why, but I really really love this book. So I am going to be getting into pretty much only spoilers in this review. So if you have not yet read Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire then I would suggest not watching this video and I would recommend reading this series obviously because it's the Harry Potter series and I waited so long to read it but you should read it and love it and then come back and discuss it with us and yes so bye for now if you have not read Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire do it okay bye so as well as only just reading the book I only just watched the movie as well I'm gonna hold on where okay maybe you can go there yeah, he's there, okay? Shh, he's there, he's watching. Right, so I watch the movies as I read the books and I never re I never watched any of the movies or anything. I think I may have seen parts of Chamber of Secrets before I read Chamber of Secrets, but only like the flying car bit. But for now I'm going to discuss this and I'm going to include bits of the movie in this book talk as well because I just want to talk about some parts of the movie that I really liked. Firstly, I just want to say something that I... Okay, this is basically what made me decide to do this book talk, is this stupid prediction that I made. Because, okay, Mad-Eye Moody, um, did you guys know, did you guys guess that he was involved with this whole thing? Like, it wasn't actually Mad-Eye Moody, but the person that was in him, forget the person's name, I'm sorry, if I get names wrong and stuff, then please don't call me out on it because like I am reading them for the first time and I'm not familiar with it but yeah um this thing happened with Mad-Eye Moody where when they first described him I swear I swear they said that he had something with his nose I think they may have said that he had a bit of his nose missing and or maybe there was something wrong with his nose and immediately I was like oh my god Voldemort is going to be a teacher at Hogwarts for this year that is so genius that is a genius way for Voldemort to be in school and that's actually what I thought for a little while and I was like yeah that's probably not what it is really because that's probably not what it is but I actually thought that so this whole book I was suspicious of Mad-Eye Moody at first I thought it was Voldemort and I was like that's stupid and then I was yeah so that didn't really come as much of a surprise to me at the end when we found out that he was the one that put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire. Speaking of which, who did you guys think put his name in the Goblet of Fire at first? I... What did I even think? I literally thought... What did I think? I thought that maybe Malfoy was behind it. I don't know. I didn't really make a guess. I just had this whole suspicion of Mad-Eye Moody doing something. I didn't think he may put him his name in though. I'm going to talk about some of the new characters we're introduced to in this book because we are introduced to a lot of new characters. Firstly I want to talk about Rita Skeeter. Obviously we're meant to hate her. She's so freaking annoying. Just Rita Skeeter and she's done perfectly in the movie by the way but the end when she turns out to be the beetle I laughed for a good 10 minutes like sitting on my bed reading that she was a beetle. I laughed so hard I was like Hermione you're a freaking genius and then they didn't I was waiting for that in the movie for her to just show up as like a beetle with like big glasses and like pink hair on lipstick or something and they didn't but <laughs> I just I love that in the book how she was a beetle and everything that I found that so funny and clever and I still love Hermione Hermione I think Hermione has to be my favorite character out of Ron Harry and Hermione maybe it would be like Hermione and then Ron and then Harry um, and I also really loved Fred and George the Weasley brothers in this book and especially in the movie in the movie they are so funny like I just love them so much in the movie they're just oh they're so funny and then the bit where they try to put their name in the goblet of fire and they're like hey 
away and then they like walk away and they get like s like flung back and then they grow the beards and they're like you said it would work it was so good i love the I love Fred and George, they're amazing. So Cho is exactly how I expected her to look in the movie and she, that whole um, thing with Harry asking her to the Yule Ball, I, I felt so bad for Harry because like Cho treated, like she, she was really nice about it and she didn't make it mean or anything, it's just that there's no good way to go about that when you've already been asked and I just felt so bad for Harry. Madame Maxime was a pretty interesting character as well. In the movie, they didn't make her get offended at Hagrid for the giant thing, how Hagrid was like, who has the giant gene in your family? And she's like, I'm not a giant. And then she gets all offended. She didn't do that in the movie, which was interesting. But, like, obviously they can't fit everything into the movie, so that's fair enough. But I liked that thing with um, Hagrid and Madame Maxime because you don't expect Hagrid to, like, be a sort of romantic person and he's like trying and he's got this weird perfume on that doesn't really smell good and he's like brushed his hair back and oh god Hagrid. Okay, is it just me that really likes Snape? <laughs> like, no, I don't like him but I like him as a character, like he makes the story so much more interesting and especially in the movie, the actor that plays him is so amazing, he's like oh, <laughs> he just does his hair swish, he's like Swish. I love the velvet underground. Swish. It's <laughs> so amazing. I freaking love Snape in the movie. Can't take him seriously. Can't be angry at him. I just laugh at him. Really, that's that's what I do. I laugh at him. Cedric Diggory. Cedric Diggory. <laughs> okay, I like Cedric in the book. He's amazing and everything. I, I, I do like Cedric. How he's nice and everything. But <laughs> in the movie... Okay, the movie starts, and Cedric, like, <laughs> I didn't know he was Edward Cullen. Cedric, I didn't know. I didn't know that he was Robert Pattinson. I had no clue. So, freaking Edward Cullen falls out of a tree in the movie, and I was like, is that Edward Cullen? Did Edward Cullen just fall from the sky? <laughs> I didn't know. And the whole, like, for the first, like, half an hour where Cedric was in the movie, I was like, that's Edward Cullen. It was so funny. Oh my gosh, I didn't know. How did I not know this? But like, oh, I thought Robert Pattinson actually did an alright job of being Cedric. Like, I can see how that's kind of Cedric. But I really like the entrance that this other school's made in the movie. Um, Bo Buxton, I, don't, I can't say that one, but, and then Durmstrang. I really like how they made the entry, especially Durmstrang. They had like their little poles and they were like, it was so cool. And I was like, this is, I can dance to this. And yeah, and then the um, Madame Maxime school, they made their little entrance and they were like, da -da -da, and they all had the uniforms. And that was, that was so interesting. I really liked Ron in this book more than I liked him in the others, especially in the movie. I don't know, I really liked this movie so far. This, this has been my favourite book and movie. And, um, <laughs> Ron and Harry obviously fight for like half the book and that was so frustrating. But at the same time, I feel like that needed to be there so that they're like stronger friends in the next book and everything. And I knew they wouldn't like stop being friends. I knew they'd start being friends again. Also I just love Hermione's um, spew, S-P-E-W campaign thing that she's got with the house elves, like that wasn't in the movie but that's understandable. But I just love that and <laughs> she's so like, she's got her little spew badge, <laughs> spew, that's so good and uh, also really like how Dumbledore has started paying Dobby and Dobby's asked to be paid and like he doesn't get a lot but he's happy with what he gets and I just love how when we get we see Dobby again he's dressed up in all these random clothes he's got like a a oh, I don't know he's got so many he's got like a tie on over the top of just his bare chest and he's got all the different colorless like mismatched socks and I really love how Ron gives him his sweater because Ron's kind of against the house elves thing he's like oh they should just be servants but then he gives his sweater and I thought that was really sweet even though he doesn't like the sweaters. And Dobby's so happy about it. I just, Dobby's so cute but also he can be annoying. But I love Dobby. You just gotta love Dobby. You can't not like Dobby. Okay, um, I'm gonna talk about the end now. 
um, the maze thing and all that, that was all cool, all the tasks were cool, the underwater one was cool, the dragon one was pretty swag too, I think, yeah, it was pretty cool and all, but then the last thing in the maze, I swear it was a bit different in the movie, like how the sides of the hedges like come and crush him, that's not how it happened in the book I don't think, which is alright, and there wasn't any, like there were no obstacles for Harry to really face, Except for the things that tried to crush him. But there wasn't like the the thing that made the riddle for him. And I was looking forward to that riddle, but it's okay. It's okay. But um Yeah, the end, <laughs> when I saw Voldemort as the little fetus, okay, even at the start when Harry had his dream, and you could see in the movie Voldemort as a little fetus and his little bony hands just coming out, he's like, kill Harry Potter. I laughed so hard, like how can he take Voldemort seriously when he looks like a fetus of like two weeks old and <laughs> like especially when they like lifted him up in the movie and just chucked him in the cauldron. <laughs> That's why I use head and shoulders. I just found it so funny, like even in the movie I was laughing at that while Cedric was dying. <laughs> I'm such a horrible person, like I wasn't laughing in the book and I wasn't laughing at Cedric, I was just laughing at Voldemort. Because <laughs> he's like this scrawny little fetus thing and it's hilarious and I just, oh, I, I was really upset that Cedric died. I kind of knew that someone was going to die because I like someone has to die eventually and yeah and that whole ceremony at the end for Cedric was really nice with Dumbledore and everything. And yeah, I just wanted to talk about Voldemort. Voldemort, Voldemort, oh Voldemort, 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 Voldemort. One last thing that I want to talk about is how with the egg, the way that he had to figure out what the clue was, was to take a bath. And that was like, Moaning Myrtle was so funny in that. Um, she's like, I closed my eyes when you got in. And in the movie, she like gets all up close to him and then she says something about with Cedric all the bubbles went away. She's like, all the bubbles went away for Cedric. <laughs> Moaning Myrtle, her voice in the movie really annoys me, but I just, she's such a weird character. Sorry, right, there is one more thing I want to talk about. I like this book. I think the reason why I like this book is because the characters are starting to grow up now and because I'm not a child reading this anymore, which I wish I read this in my childhood, but they're all growing up now and they're like starting to do relationship stuff, like how... Hermione has um, Victor Crumb and uh, I like how Harry and Ron don't know who to ask and then um, they're like, all the girls walk in packs, how do you get one on their own? And then um, Ron's like, Hermione, you're a girl. And then Hermione's like, well spotted. <laughs> this, is why I want, this is why I love Hermione. But yeah, I really like the Yule Ball, especially in the movie. Hermione looked amazing. And like, I don't know if you can tell, but I kind of tried to do Hermione hair, it didn't really work, but just for the sake of this book talk I tried to, and I don't know, but yeah, I really like the Yule Ball, and I like how they've, they're starting to mature, and they're starting to think about relationships. I feel like really bad for the girls that Ron and Harry took, because they just sat there and didn't dance with them, and they were like, are you going to ask me to dance, and then she just walks away, and yeah, like... Uh, Hermione had a good time with that ball until Harry made her cry, or Ron made her cry, yeah, Ron made her cry. So that's all I wanted to talk about for Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This has been my favourite book so far, and I don't think I'm the only one. I've heard other people say this is their favourite in the whole series, and I haven't even read the whole series yet, so I don't know. But tell me, just discuss with me things that I talked about. Just discuss with me, because that's why I make videos, is because I want to discuss books with people not just discuss with the camera. So discuss with me, which book was your favourite? Is this, is this your favourite? How many books have you read? Are you only just starting to read them like me? Are you reading them with me? Do it. Read them with me. Do it. That is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!